When handling all instruments, safety and economy of movement is essential. Relaxed handling is needed in order to avoid awkward movements. But at the tips of the fingers. When opening a suture package, tear it out in the shown and remove the needle from the packet with the needle holder. Never use your fingers. Never pick up needles with your hands. It is important not to handle sharps directly like this. When picking up needles, use the needle holder. And then, if you wish to alter the position of the needle in the needle holder, don't use your fingers. Use the forceps to hold the needle and then reposition it. Also be careful when tightening sutures that the needle does not do damage outside your field of vision. Therefore, when dealing with a long thread, don't simply pull at the needle, but use the middle finger of your right hand to grasp the thread, and then use your closed forceps to take up further slack. Suture material can then be tightened without the needle leaving your field of vision. Your suture material is then passed to your assistant and the needle is now available for your next suture. When you have finished with the needle, do not lay it down on the patient or on the table, but pick it up and whenever possible dispose of it by cutting off the thread and placing it in the sharps bin provided. Never handle a blade with your fingers, but always use a hemostat as seen here. Slide the blade gently onto the handle. When it comes to removing it, just lift it off from the distal end and slide it off gently without jerking. Immediately place it in the sharps bin that is provided. Remember, when operating, do not have the table set too high or for your back sake too low. The most comfortable position to operate in is one where your forearm is resting horizontally. Safe and effective surgery requires correct and safe handling of all surgical instruments and sutures. Please take time to acquaint yourself with the instruments provided. Let's first of all look at the scalpel. When handling the scalpel, you do not handle it like this or like this, as you don't intend to stab anyone. Instead, handle it in this manner, using your index finger to steady it. Then you can draw it gently and carefully across the skin, as you see here, in a controlled manner. Never, ever cut towards your own fingers or thumb, as it may not just be the patient that you cut. When doing delicate work with a fine-bladed scalpel, you may wish to hold it like a pen. Then finer work can be undertaken. Note how the little finger can be used to steady the hand holding the scalpel. When passing a scalpel, never pass it blade first, but handle first with the blade down. However, the safest way is always to put it into a kidney dish and pass it to your assistant or scrub nurse. Now, let's look at the scissors. There are two types of scissors. One is more robust for cutting suture materials and the other is finer for tissue dissection. Let's look at how to hold scissors. Hold them with just the tips of the distal phalanges with thumb and ring finger in the rings, steadying the scissors with the index finger and the middle finger. Never put your fingers right the way through, as this makes it difficult to extract your fingers from the instrument. However, by using just the distal phalanges, you get very good control for accurate dissection. If you're cutting sutures at depth, such as in the pelvis, it's often wise to stabilize the instrument over your index finger. This allows for accurate cutting. 
and prevents a tremor down a deep dark hole. We now move on to the forceps. There are two basic types of forceps. One is the non-toothed, the other the toothed. If we take the toothed forceps such as we see here, these are often used for tough tissues such as skin. While the non-toothed forceps tend to be used for more delicate tissues such as bowel. Hold the forceps as you see demonstrated here and not grasped in your fist like this. By holding them gently, you get accurate control of the tips of the forceps. Now, let us consider the hemostat. Correct handling of the hemostat is critical. Pick it up much as we did with the scissors, using the distal phalanges, and, as one is opening them, put pressure on the thumb against the ring finger and middle finger, and then the hemostat opens gently in a controlled manner. If holding it in your non-dominant hand, you might wish to hold it in this manner, and then put pressure from the middle and ring finger against the thumb and index finger, and open the hemostat in a controlled manner. Watch again pressure from the middle and ring finger against the thumb and the index finger and it opens smoothly. Do not let the hemostat jerk as this can do damage to any blood vessel it might be holding. Finally, we come to the needle holder. As mentioned previously, always pick up the needle with the forceps, then pick up the needle holder in a similar manner to the scissors and the hemostat. Place the needle holder about two-thirds of the way around the circumference of the needle, as you see here. Do not place it too near to the tip or the rear of the needle, and place it in the jaws of the needle holder, as demonstrated. Insertion of sutures requires a smooth supination of the forearm, but occasionally a backhand suture is required, in which case the needle position can be changed in the needle holder enabling you to insert a backhand suture. This is an exercise of forearm manipulation with one arm pronating and the other supinating synchronously. Watch again, one arm is pronating while the other arm supinates and therefore the needle can be changed from the forehand